Hey y'all, so a while ago I had done a video on 44 Magnum and my top five reasons why I thought uh, it was a good idea to carry 44 Magnum. And uh, I thought it was a good video and uh, apparently a lot of other people did because it's got a lot of views and a lot of interest. And what I wanted to do was in that video I had kind of used a couple throwaway uh, gimmicky reasons, right? Um, you know, just joking around, kind of keep the video lighthearted. And since then, I've come up with better ways to explain certain things. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to uh, do another video and kind of uh, give more, more clarification, more examples of why I feel that 44 Magnum slash uh, any high power cartridge. And I guess that's a thing that I should specify is that while I'm going to keep saying 44 Magnum today, um, you know, stuff like 357 Magnum, 44 uh, Magnum, 10 millimeter, you know, basically your more powerful, uh, what would generally be considered handgun rounds, might be a good choice for EDC. I just so happen to choose a 44 Magnum and occasionally a 10 millimeter. But with that, let's get into the video, shall we? Okay, so here we are on the bench, and I figured we should get right into the video. So, first, some statistics. Um, statistically, you're pretty likely to never need your firearm in a self-defense situation throughout your life. We live in a fairly safe time, despite what the left media might tell you. And statistically, crime has been going down for a while, and it's pretty safe. Also, if you do end up needing your firearm, the mere presentation of your firearm, regardless of what firearm it is, is usually enough to make the bad guy realize it's not what they want to do with their life. They don't want to get shot, so they go away. If they still continue pers to persist, there's also a high chance that a single shot to that person, whether it hits or not, is generally enough to make the person seriously reconsider their life and go away. And again, these statistics, um, variety of different sources, I highly recommend just Googling it yourself because, uh, as Paul Harrell would say, finding real data on that can be kind of difficult because it turn turns out the average civilian, when uh, when they don't actually have to shoot anybody, they generally don't waste their time reporting to the police, and they go on about their day, merry, merry as could be. So with all that being said, with basically hearing that you could carry around a little 380 or a little 32, and it probably would serve you quite well for your entire uh, day's adventures, why on earth would you want to carry uh, a 10 mil? a 44 mag, a 357 mag, even a 45, something big, bulky, heavy, and awkward. Well, because while 95% of the time uh, that little 380 might be good, or that little 9 mil might be good, there are situations where it isn't. A uh, perfect example here, and again, the situation I'm going to describe is out of the ordinary. It is rare it's not something that happens every day but it does happen there's an officer called timothy Graman, and for anybody that doesn't know who he is uh i would just merely google why one cop carries 145 rounds on his person uh and donut operator did an excellent video on that i highly recommend you go watch it basically what happened was uh bad guy robs bank cop tracks down bad guy Bad guy gets in, starts shooting at cop while he's in his car. Cop engages bad guy. They trade shots back and forth. Uh, cop puts 14 rounds into bad guy with, I believe he was carrying a Glock 45 ACP. And while cop was putting many around that would eventually be lethal into bad guy, um, bad guy was able to continue to shoot at cop because that he just was not doing enough damage to put down bad guy quick enough and keep him from firing back. Um, this guy was damned and determined to do damage to the cop, you know, to, I guess, uh, end up killing the cop. I believe there was a statement where he said that was his goal, uh, the bad guy, of course. And basically, at the end of it, the the cop ended up putting his final three rounds into uh, the skull of bad guy 
and when the uh, backup finally arrived, it turns out that the guy still had vital signs. Now again, this is a very far out there scenario. This does not happen every day. I'm not saying this is commonplace, but it does happen. And, and from what uh, the police reports and everything said, this guy wasn't on drugs, wasn't some nutcase. I mean, obviously he was a nutcase, but he wasn't like some extraordinary human. He was just a determined individual who had a uh, motive to keep going, right? So with all that said, and with that story being a, an interesting example, um, that's one of the reasons why I'm a big fan of carrying something with a little more oomph than a nine millimeter, uh, you know, a 40 or a 380 or something like that, because it gives you the ability to, uh, it increases your chances of a one shot takedown, you know, uh, as a concealed carrier, you know, sadly we are the good guys. And as the good guy, uh, when we engage a target, we are engaging, you know, someone who is already threatening our life and it is our job to engage them until they stop. It is not our job to engage them until they are dead. It is our job to engage them until they stop, till they no longer pose a threat to us. And with something a little more beefy, like a 10 or a 44, and etc., uh, I feel that that improves my chances of doing that quicker and more efficiently. Right? Uh, you know, there there are certain people that will say all handgun cartridges are the, are the same. They all do the same general ballistics. Well, again, um, if you go watch Paul Harrell shoot meat targets with various different handgun rounds you'll learn very quickly that that is not the case. There is a big difference between firing a small 380 uh, pocket revolver and firing a full-size 10 millimeter or a full-size 357 or a full-size 44 mag. Uh, there is a lot of energy difference. There is ballistics difference. There is uh, also the nice thing about having something that's uh, going a lot of bit faster is it ensures hollow point expansion, which is something that doesn't always happen with your little pocket 38 or 380. Uh, that's, you know, one thing I, I always find it interesting, people that carry little pocket 38s, as I have in the past and still do, and uh, they'll usually carry hollow points that, upon testing in both ballistics gel and meat targets, don't actually expand. Well, with a higher power cartridge, uh, you can kind of guarantee that expansion will happen and the bullet will perform to its maximum effectiveness. So uh, that's kind of one of the big reasons and more serious reasons of why I carry a 44 mag is because I, I have uh, more confidence that it will be able to accomplish the task needed if it's called upon. Now, the other thing about that is a lot of people don't consider is a lot of times as civilians, you expect it to be a one-on-one -on -one situation. So you expect you, the good guy, right, to be attacked by one bad guy. And you think it's going to be one-on-one, -on -one. maybe he's got a knife, maybe he's got a gun, right? And again, when you're carrying a smaller, lower power gun, um, you know, you might have enough ammunition to engage one threat. Well, what if bad guy brings a friend? And again, it happens. You know, it happens. You know, the, uh, you know, people breaking into houses, people breaking into cars, people doing bad things, uh, mugging people, you know, they do work in teams. So what happens when you, the good guy, run into multiple bad guys? Well, again, having that more powerful cartridge that might be able to take someone out of the uh, out of being a threat to you quicker again comes into play i'm pretty sure that it you know again if you've got two determined individuals that aren't going to stop until basically their body uh, tells them hey we can't we can't keep fighting um you know i'm going to want the maximum effectiveness out of my handgun to stop that threat as quickly as possible and, you know, hopefully, hopefully the stopping of the one threat will mean that they both uh, stop. But, you know, again, in that situation, um, being able to stop that threat and maybe address 
the second or hopefully not, but maybe even third threat. Now let's see, we'll, we'll use this one for the third threat. And um, yeah, so well, that's basically two main serious reasons why I like 44 mag, 10 mil, uh, 357 mag, all that. And these, you know, sitting on this table right here is two of my uh, favorite carry guns, right? A 10 millimeter Delta Elite and a 329 PD 44 Magnum. Uh, but that's kind, of, that's kind of why I like carrying something with a little more oomph, because I know that it, uh, if called upon, which hopefully it never is, but if called upon, uh, I have confidence that it can accomplish what I ask of it. So that's my video for today. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them, and have a good day.